Reaper, we keep it rough, we keep it raw, we keep it real. Let's talk about Zoe Williams answers Corey Holcomb's, you know, uh, message. You know, Zoe Williams, you know, uh, went on the Craig Fax show to rebuttal Corey Holcomb and set the record straight. But I was unimpressed, you know, uh, with Zoe trying to set the record straight because when Brandon asked him, you know, did he intend to pay Corey back, even if he had the money, or how was he going to pay him back? And the lick was him making a Netflix documentary you know, uh, with Tyreek Nasheed or somebody, or he was going to sell this documentary to uh, Netflix or whatever, you know. Um, yeah, that's a lick, because that's a long shot or whatever. But he also said one thing that Corey said, don't worry about the money. And Corey did say that, and he told Zoe, you know, uh, he didn't need his money. And don't worry about it. But what I feel what it was is a loyalty thing, like I said in one of my other videos. Because Zoe had been saying people told him not to fuck with Corey, you know, ever since back in the day, was DMing him and saying that he marginalizing him and, you know, hey, he needs to get out from up under him and stuff like that. I told you this 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 thing had been going on for a long time. And Zoe said he didn't agree with some of the stuff that Corey Holcomb used to say. I told you this went back to the RMC days when, you know, Corey fell out with Poetis because he said Poetis owed him money. And Zoe was friends with Poetis. And then when Corey fell out with Bobby... You know, uh, Zoe sided with Bobby and got to be good friends with Bobby. You know, and then when he, they freeze love fell out, you know, and quit coming on the show, you know, uh, I don't know if him and Freeze fell out or whatever, but Freeze just went and got his own thing. But, you know, uh, Zoe was friends with Freeze, and I get that. They was friends for 25 years. But then when Grady come up and is introduced to Zoe by you know, Corey, you know, um, so sided with Grady because every time Corey had something to say about Grady, this is how he was testing Zoe's temperature, was Zoe would jump up and say, hey, don't do that, don't say that, don't this. So Zoe had already chose up anybody that Corey had beef with or even if they had a disagreement even though you my dude and you've been rocking with me for 10 years, it seems like you side against me with these other people, you know. Uh, so I can't rock with you no more, you know. And like I said, I think Corey was more of a friend to Zoe than Zoe was to Corey. Now look at this. He bought Zoe on his platform. I know Zoe said he got his, sh his start with, you know... Um, that Jamie Foxx show, you know, uh, that they had on. But what I'm saying is, Corey introduced him to the young crowd again, because the young crowd, young people didn't know who Zoe Williams was. They know uh, Zoe through Corey Holcomb, the 5150 show, you know. Uh, that's how they know Zoe. But he gave you a platform, you know, Zoe, to create your own thing and to promote your own books and stuff like that. And you didn't do that. And he also told you not to worry about $20,000 that, uh, you know, you owed him for, uh, you know, combing Ari Spears' head, you know, with your elbows. You know, and what's interesting is, you know, Zoe said that if he had 20000 he would pay Corey back or he was waiting to you know, get a lick. And so then they start questioning Zoe about, 
what did he do with the GoFundMe money that he was supposed to have for a studio? Now this gets real interesting because he said 8000 went to some guy that, you know, he knew that helped him do some business with that and he still got 30000 left. Now, I don't think Zoe Williams got 30000 in an account because he couldn't even give Corey Holcomb even a payment or a payment plan and he said they said why didn't you set up a payment plan with him and he said you know he was waiting till he got his lick meaning Zoe was never planning on paying that money back and I told you guys that the reason that he didn't write out a handwritten statement that Corey's attorney wanted him to write out because then that would place blame on him and Corey could have sued him you know, but I don't think it was over the $20,000, you know, because Corey told him not to worry about it. I think it's a loyalty issue with Zoe, because Zoe was up under a due for 20 years that he said that he felt that was marginalizing him and didn't respect him. So why would you up under him for 10 years, you know, uh, because you're out for Zoe. That's why you were up under him for 10 years. And Zoe doesn't have the ability to create, uh, you know, money things on his own. Now, why don't Corey respect him? And I'm not saying Corey Holcomb was right, because he wasn't. He should have done all this behind closed doors, which was, you know, a punk move, you know, to me on Corey's behalf. But like I said... Well, some of the things that Corey was saying was true. And when you tell the truth, you know, uh, people like Zoe, you know, can't handle them. People that, you know, want to leech off of you or not, or, you know, that isn't a real friend. They cannot handle the truth about their own situation because... You know, uh, what I'm saying is, I think Zoe used some of that GoFundMe money, you know, to get him an automobile because people had said that before and he didn't say, he didn't rebuttal anything. You know, uh, I think Corey knows that. And I think Zoe is not looking up to his plate being a man that he should be. And this is what causes Corey to not respect him but they're on a com they're there it's a comedy show so they're going to needle each other and talk about each other that's what comedy shows do Corey got d ray on his show if you go to his show and they're needling each other you know i mean it's a comedy show so how is he mar marginalizing you or whatever and then zoe had the nerve to it's supposed to be a argument between you and Corey, but then you show up with your posse you know, um, you know, a bunch of brothers from the hood in L.A., Crips or whatever, you know, and you a 50-year-old man, you know, uh, I thought that made you look weak because you had your posse, and then one dude was talking like, you know, uh, saying things like, you know, yeah, if we got a problem with it, we gonna go handle it and this, that, what? That's, that's kid shit. That's not what a 50-year-old man should be doing with another 50-some-year-old man. If you got a beef with them, you handle it, you know, like men. And what cracks me up about these brothers is they're talking about, Corey talking about he'll whoop Zoe's ass and Zoe's talking about fighting and they need a fair one. You know, when you get to be in your 50s, you don't fight. You know, I mean, all your fighting days is over with, you know, so ain't nobody going to take no ass whooping in their 50s. And ain't nobody going to give one, you know, unless somebody's going to come up dead, you know. So I personally think it's all childish to me, you know, uh, I think. But Corey's a comedian. He's just goofy. You see what he did on this show. He's just a goofy brother. Uh, you know, that's why he's a comedian, because he's funny, you know. And, uh, you know, he even talks stuff, but, you know, real brothers... You know, I mean, if they say, as they say, they don't, you know, lie on their penis. You know, the Reaper keep it 1,000. And some men, you know, feel like they say, baby, if I, if I provide this lifestyle for you, 
you know, and you taking trips with me, I bring you into my world, I'm spending money on you, you know, I'm riding you around in my car, or you got a car, or you living with me and you my woman, that's the most valuable thing I could give you, you know, because, you know, penis... Well, I don't value my penis because, you know, a man will throw it up in anybody. The reaper keep it 1,000. But I value my shit that I work for. You know, my shit, you know, that I hustle for. You know, I value that. But, you know, I mean, as far as my penis, I don't value this. This is why, you know, uh, women, their bodies are the most precious thing because a man look at your body and your face and he sizes you up whether he wants to be with you or get with you or not you know so if you give the most precious thing away which is your body you know uh you in a losing battle you know the reaper keep it 1000 when you a woman but a man's penis that's not his most precious thing most men don't give a shit about their penis because they'll throw it up in anybody you know the reaper keep it 1000 you know but their money and their material things and their car and their time and, you know, they got you in their house or whatever, you know, that's showing that they love you. They say always if you want to know if a man really love you, uh, let him get you some health insurance or some life insurance. You know, they say make him sign something like a marriage certificate or, you know, or put you on his house or his car. You know, make him sign something or his insurance or something. That's showing you that he really love you. You know, but by, by, you know, giving you some penis, well, a man to give anybody some penis, this is why y'all call us dogs. But if we give you our possessions, that means that, you know, we value you. And what was interesting, you know, on this show or whatever is, you know, one brother that was with Zoe, they were talking about what a buster is, a square buster or, you know, a hustling buster or whatever, a gang member buster. And they said a buster is a buster. And they say, what is a buster? That says somebody that's pretending to be something that they're not. Well, you know, C Corey is in the entertainment business. He's a comedian, so he pretends to be something that he ain't. He ain't because he's in the entertainment business. You know, he got a show and he do stand-up comedy and he get paid for that. So, you know, um, but Zoe said you right a man that pretends to be something that he's not but Zoe never took a look in the mirror to say Zoe you got all this knowledge for how men should be men but you're not even being a bona fide stand-up man and this is what Corey saw probably and what other people saw you know behind the scenes that you're not who you say you are you know the reaper keep it 1000 so I mean, like I said, I think two brothers should arm things out. I don't think Zoe should go back on that show, which I don't think he will. You know, I don't think I don't agree with them, you know, uh, arguing in public. They should have handled that behind closed doors. But I can't fault Corey for what he was saying far as, you know, him being a man. You know what I'm saying? Or him being a, a fuck nigga or whatever. Because anytime you stay up under a man, you know, for that period of time, you know, and you say that you were uncomfortable with what he was saying and you felt that he was marginalizing you, you know, why did you stay up under him that long? Well, that doesn't make sense with you being an older man. You know, the reaper keep it 1,000. You know, you were out for what you could get. You know, and that would be called a leech, you know. And then that man paid out $20,000 still and told you don't worry about it. So I don't think it was about the money because Corey said he didn't need those money. I think it was about the loyalty factor. Like, if I don't fuck with this dude, what you doing fucking with him? And it seemed like you fuck with him more than you fuck with me because, you know, uh, you're supposed to be cool with me. You're supposed to be you know, my friend or whatever, and I introduced you to this dude or whatever, so, and these dudes is talking about me behind my back, you know they is, because you said so, they was DMing you and everything, telling you don't fuck with Corey, but, 
you still fucking with, you know, them or whatever, and you met them through Corey. So, I don't think that these guys were really friends, but I think Corey was more of a friend to Zoe than Zoe was to Corey, you know, just because of the jealousy factor. Reapa, we keep it rough, we keep it raw, we keep it real. Make sure you subscribe to the Reaper. Reaper out. Peace.